Hello, everyone. So today we talk about the uh, evolution of host association in Rickettsialis and how environmental metagenomics help to understand it. Uh, the Rickettsialis is a well, bacteria order of the alpha protobacteria. They have a basal position on it. Uh, as far as you know, all members are host associated. Uh, initially, they were classified as a sort of um, diff a pathogen. I mean, it was uh, the typical classification as the type spe species is Rickettsia provazeki the causative agent of uh, typhus, and generally was a sort of dangerous for kind of uh, transmit of uh, pathogen transmitted by uh, different kind of vectors, mostly uh, blood feedings, impacting so on human health or uh, livestock, so things of economical importance. So it's a very anthropocentric view. Uh, the only exception was, uh, the first one was Paul Bacchia. Initially, it was just a central goal, uh, was identified in the common host mosquito. Um, demon mostly an exception, but not very important, as nameless parasite causing not much, not much effect at all. This kind of uh, image changed when was discovered the cytoplasmatic uh, compatibility that uh, Paul Bacchia calls in uh, mosquitoes. And this led to a lot more research in it. Now we know that this uh, uh, is extremely common. 40% uh, of terrestrial arthropods are infected by it. This is because Volbachia is uh, known for capability to uh, manipulate its source uh, reproduction through pathogenesis, feminization, and male killing. Uh, another you know, discovery was in 95, well, that, um, the Dirofilari mitis, that is the dog earthworm, as a, a bacterial symbiont uh, Volbachia that is uh, necessary for its development, as apparently some oil in uh, pathogenicity, and is common in different uh, filaria nematodes, and in showing so the typical cophylogeny that we found with uh, nutritional symbionts. This was the first case of a non arthropod host for uh, Rickettsialis. So until now, we've, we have most other uh, pathogenic uh, Rickettsialis, and the, the, the exception for Vobachia that is special. But, then um, there was a discovery of Medicularia mitochondri, that is a mutualist of the tick Ixodes ricinus and other ticks. Uh, it uh, provides B vitamin, a common feature for uh, endosymbionts of uh, uh, blood feeders. But this, uh, it has this uh, particular trait, uh, as the name says, that, live, uh, that resides inside the host mitochondria, the tick. And also as the presence of flagella-like uh, genes, that again was uh, quite a surprise as uh, Rickettsia were defined as non-motile bacteria and was quite against what we know at that time. And well, we discovered the bacteria that was the third family, the Midicoriaceae. Uh, so this kind of view of the Rickettsia was expanded sampling outside the known, outside the uh, hematophagus arthropods. And especially uh, quite common in, uh, unicellular eukaryotes uh, in aquatic environment, especially amoebae, ciliates, but also many others, and lead to see quite more interesting situation. In particular, uh, we can see here the, this is uh, imagery where we have uh, the full flagella, uh, quite visible, uh, what is in this uh, bacteria, this is Rickettsia, and uh, is this image is uh, inside of uh, Paramecium, but also uh, was found uh, the Yanireva statrix, that is the first, as far as you know, probably the only one thing now characterized that is Rickettsialis that is living outside the source. So it's outside the surface of the Paramecium. It, uh, it's a parasite. And uh, uh, well, so we have this kind of complex scenario because uh, different from the region idea, we have a lot of different situations about the host that are quite variable different kind of interaction for pathogenicity, toss manipulation, parasites, mutualism, and different localization inside the cell or even the surface. So uh, our objective was to have a global comparative analysis of the order, inferring the deep phylogeny, and trying to reconstruct, let's say, the evolutionary history, and also doing the whole thing, trying to avoid the sampling bias on pathogens that is still uh, a thing. We started, so for our data set, we, we use uh, the, well, Everything was published about Rickettsialis, so more described, uh, described ones, selecting some representatives. We added a few, what, nine uh, newly sequenced genomes from eukaryotic uh, hosts. And so we searched uh, for many ways uh, for different mags uh, to identify Rickettsialis, uh, mostly to what was available in CBI and, uh, and the GTDB database, finding whatever was belonging in the same lineages of these uh, candidates. 
So we do the uh, what is genetic analysis, uh, trying to correct from classical problems that is the compositional bias or so the GC content of the sequence, and uh, try, trying it out repeatedly to uh, put the mags in a correct phylogenetic position. So what we got was uh, this tree of uh, 100 genomes in uh, divided in 10 families. We started from four known families, three intracellular, one extracellular. Uh, three of these new families were found also in a paper that went out during, during the, the, this time. And uh, uh, well, all new families are made by MEX, so we don't have experimental data about them. But uh, they are well, in two groups. One is close to uh, the Anira, the extracellular one. And as the other groups, the, the various families that are present basal to all the other Rickettsiales. Uh, so uh, what the most strike, striking feature uh, is uh, concerning the metabolism. What well, here we, can, we can see here in uh, blue, we have the genetic capability for the biosynthesis for nucleotides and amino acids. In red, the capability, the genes for transporters. Uh, the invention proportion, I mean, clearly you synthesize them or you take them. Uh, steal them if you're a parasite, but makes sense. But uh, the interesting part is that uh, you can see here that the basal clade has uh, the bio full biosynthetic capability and um, very limited trans number of transporters. But uh, we can see that the different uh, intracellular families, most of them have uh, lost the amino acid um, synthesis capability and most of the nucleotide uh, biosynthetic capability, with the exception of uh, Napatmatache, the one in part for the rest family. But the, this, again, we have so only one case experimental uh, characterized of uh, the Anira Vastatrix that uh, has still kept the amino acid provision. So we somehow infer that uh, this would be probably the can somehow leave not inside the host. And this, this kind of thing, looking as with a couple of exceptions inside, so that this kind of thing seems to have been happened multiple times independently. So the kind of scenario is a multiple uh, independent acquisition of the transporter with the biosynthetic capability ancestral. And these multiple acquisition and duplication happen multiple times in the history of the order. And uh, also we saw that the generally the phylogeny of the of this gene or the transporters typically is non-congruent with the, the fam uh, with the phylogeny of the families, with also other bacteria outside the Ketzialis, close to them or in the middle of them. It's, very messy. So again, another proof of the horizontal gene transfer. As some uh, tidbits around it uh, were interesting was like the presence of the flagellum that was quite common. That was the opposite of the initial idea of Rickettsialis. That is just generally there is an independent loss in uh, Rickettsialis that have a terrestrial host. And uh, well, the world interacting system, inter uh, interacting system with eukaryotes, so the type four secretion system, and uh, generally part of the system of exotoxin invasion, so interacting system quite in a violent, violent way, let's say, uh, already present in basal clade, uh, most everywhere. So apparently they are already equipped to uh, interact with eukaryotes, possibly defending against them or attacking them. And uh, uh, so what we inferring is like uh, a series of adaptation through uh, an acceptation of this already available uh, genomic uh, capability and defense repertoire. And uh, uh, this kind of system probably to, uh, was used to develop it multiple times independently the intracellularity. Uh, we assume that is uh, led by the acquisition of transporter that then could uh, lead a classic uh, reduction uh, because there is no need to keep the biosynthetic capability at that point. And that would explain also the different kind of localization, different family. And intracellularity will be a sort of uh, convergent feature. Uh, one of the, well, just as last remark, I want to say that this kind of uh, comprehension of the understanding of the order and the evolutionary history was possible using both experimental data that we could just get only considering, let's say, the, and it's from an environmental point of view, so searching around almost again randomly and not just as pathogen, because otherwise we would have just struck with very limited information, but also a lot of it is came of this information are came coming from uh, MEX. Even without the experimental information, there are quite a few useful data that we could use. So, well, hopefully in the future, maybe you can have some more experimental information again uh, about the other clades, the basal clades. That would be interesting. And uh, well, so 
thank you for like, you for your attention and all the people that was involved in this uh, research. If you have any question, I mean, yeah. Yeah, very interested on the transporter part. So, any idea of where these transporters are coming from? Which organisms? Uh, yeah. That is quite complicated to understand when we have a very long time who, who is the source. I mean, it's very difficult to say, okay, they are the source or they just derived. I mean, who's the father? That it's very difficult to know. We see that other bacteria that present, that well, many of them are intracellular bacteria, bacteria that interact with other eukaryotes. We can infer probably this kind of thing happened for a lot of horizontal gene transfer, typically like in bacteria inside amoeba. That's very common, but it's a very weird case. Like Celebrate that are quite the apparently eukaryotic genes. Quite crazy. I mean, it's, but who was the origin with this kind of timelines is very difficult to understand. Any other questions? Okay, then I have a question. Have you looked at two of the genes basically when you were analyzing the, the, at the loss of the or only at the full length? Uh, well, for the metabolic capability, we were looking for uh, genes that were. At least with a certain uh, alignment, I mean, yeah. we're trying okay. to put out everything was. We didn't believe that then. Okay, so but uh, these are kind of highly reduced genomes, and the uh, super genes are all gone, or sort of. I mean, it's sort of you say intermediate because it's not like a nutrition symbiont. I mm -hmm. mean, some of them are nutrition symbiont, and then then you found a very reduced situation for a couple of genomes that are very long mm -hmm. branches. Mm -hmm. uh, one is for Kenya, but very long branches. They have a lot of pseudo genes. There are some mm -hmm. cases mm -hmm. where often with a classic thing with a lot of increase of mobile elements. Mm -hmm. This is a thing that happens in very specific place. Normally, they have small genomes with the mm -hmm. same parasite, but quite uh, stable. Mm -hmm. I mean, they don't get smaller than that, around mm -hmm. one, two megabases. So it's not extremely small, but mm -hmm. not very big. Very cool. Um, I was... There, there are pathogens such as staph and bacillus where you know you, you have genes that you know that are used for identifying the host. Do you know if there's something like that in your Rickettsiales? So usually they tend to be like um, cell surface binding proteins or something like that. And you have type 6 secretion systems as well. So yeah, do you have anything that's specific to a host? Huh. Uh, as far as you know, not not a lot. I mean, uh, generally the classification of the pathogenic uh, repertoire is done typically, let's say, at family level. I mean, for a lot of research, like okay, Rickettsiaceae and possibly the Rickettsia genus side of it. Well, okay, we know that a lot of them are quite specific, and there's a lot of work with that kind of things. But it's more or like okay, we're we're interested in what happens to humans, what happens to cattle, what, and we know in that case, but not much on the opposite side that, okay, we see this gene and we know that it's typical to get to this kind of host. But I would say they're generally quite adapted to move around a lot of different hosts. There are cases like that are the same species. Uh, Megara polyxenophila was named polyxenophila, so made with many uh, friends hosts, little because it was found in a plethora of different hosts with very similar genome, so we're quite able to move around. So we'll say in many cases, it's not very specific. Okay, any other questions? Okay, Santiago. So